Hari. Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Grivaradha Hari Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Grivaradha Hari Yashoda Nandana Brajajan Naranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajan Naranjana Yamuna Tira Vanacham Hari Yamuna Tira Vanacham Hari Gaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihang Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihang Hari Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Grivaradha Hari Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Grivaradha Hari Yashoda Nandana Brajajan Naranjana Yamuna Tira Vanacham Hari Yamuna Tira Vanacham Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihang Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihang Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihang Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Shama Sundar Radha Shama Sundar Radha Jaya Radha Shama Radha Shama Radha Shama Jaya Radha Shama Jaya Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jaya Krishna Balaram. Jaya Gauranitai, Gauranitai. Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai Nittai Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai Nittai Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai Nittai Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Vishupada Paramahamsa Parivara Jagacharya Ashtota Shatta Shishma Chila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jayam Shupat Paramahamsa Parivirajya Gacharya Ashrata Sattva Shishma Chila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakku Srila Prabhupada Ki Ananta Kodhi Vaishnava Rinda Ki Sri Rupa Sri Sanatan Bhatta Raghunachi Jeeva Gopalavata Dasa Raghunachi Sari Goswami Prabhu Ki Prem Se Kosi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nita Ananda Sri Adaita Gadadar Sri Bajari Gaurav Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Go Gopal Gopi Gopi Nacham Kund Radha Kund Giri Gopadana Ki Jai Vrinda Bandham Ki Jai Matar Dham Ki Jai Maipran Dham Ki Jai Jagarapuri Dham Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Ganga Yamuna Devi Ki Jai Hari Nam Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai Sri Sri Gaunitai Ki Jai Sri Sri Krishna Bararam Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Shama Sundar Ki Jai Go Premanande Hari Hari Bol Sama Veta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All Glories to the Assembly of Otis All Glories to the Assembly of Otis All Glories to Sri Guran Sri Guranga All Glories to Sri La Prabhupada Reading from the Bhagavad Gita as it is. So,
Anyone knows exactly where we are? Who was here yesterday? Preface where? Starting. Starting. Oh, yesterday was setting the scene. Okay, all right, setting the scene. Okay, fine. So now preface. Srila Prabhupada ki. Bandiham Sri Guru Sri Yotapada Gamalan Sri Guru and Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savarutam Parjana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha Preface Originally I wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is in the form in which it is presented now. When this book was first published, the original manuscript was unfortunately cut short to less than 400 pages without, illustration, without illustrations and without explanation for most of the original verses of the Bhagavad Gita. In all of my other books, Srimad Bhagavatam, Sishon Upanishad, etc., the system is that I give the original verse, its English transliteration, word for word, Sanskrit, English equivalent, translation and purports. This makes the book very authentic and scholarly and makes the meaning self-evident. I was not happy, therefore, when I had to minimize my original manuscript. But later on, when the demand for Bhagavad Gita as it is considerably increased, I was requested by many scholars and devotees to present the book in its original form. Thus the present attempt is to offer the original manuscript of this great book of knowledge with full parampara explanation in order to establish the Krishna consciousness movement more soundly and progressively. Hmm. Our Krishna consciousness movement is genuine, histor historically authorized, natural and transcendental due to its being based on Bhagavad Gita as it is. It is gradually becoming the most popular movement in the entire world, especially amongst the younger generation. It is becoming more and more interesting to the older generation also. Older gentlemen are becoming interested, so much so that the fathers and grandfathers of my disciples are encouraging us by becoming life members of our great society, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. In Los Angeles, many fathers and mothers used to come to see me to express their feelings of gratitude for my leading the Krishna consciousness movement throughout the entire world. Some of them said that it is greatly fortunate for the Americans that, that I have started the Krishna consciousness movement in America. But actually the original father of this movement is Lord Krishna himself. Since it was started a very long time ago, but is coming down to human society by disciplic succession. If I have any credit in this connection, it does not belong to me personally, but it is due to my eternal spiritual master, his divine grace, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Parivaraja Gacharya, one of the day, Srishimad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki. Mm. So, he is actually, mm. Srila Prabhupada always gave credit to his spiritual master and that is natural for the disciple. He thinks that whatever I'm able to do is due to the mercy of my spiritual master, due to the mercy of Mahaprabhu, due to the mercy of Krishna, the Supreme Lord. Uh, and if there are any shortcomings, it is due to my uh, misfortune that I'm not able to express uh, it nicely. So that is the mood of a genuine uh, devotee. Mm. It's always most humble. So, <coughs> and now this month actually, the end of the month, uh, uh, 29th February, uh, 2024, so we are going to observe the 150th 
anniversary of the appearance of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasatta Thakur, Srila Prabhupada. Mm. So, <coughs> it is, uh, of course, to be observed by mm, the devotees of Srila Prabhupada and the devotees following Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasit Thakur and Srila Prabhupada mm, according to the lunar calendar, the Vaishnav calendar. So he appeared mm, uh, in the <coughs> magmas and in the bright uh, fortnight uh, of that uh, of that month. Now in the in the uh, sorry in the next month in the Falgun Mass after Nityananda Tarudashi, uh, which is uh, I believe on the twenty second, and then <coughs> so the dark fortnight of the Falgun Mass. Uh, so. <coughs> So as devotees of Srila Prabhupada also it is our duty to to offer respect, to offer uh, feelings of gratitude uh, to Srila Prabhupada Spiritual Master for bringing Krishna consciousness first of all in Bharadvasha in India and then Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada also made some attempts to spread Krishna consciousness in the whole world specifically by sending some of his disciples first to England and to Germany and little success was there but then he empowered and of course uh, Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada, he was empowered not only by his spiritual master, by Mahaprabhu, as Mahaprabhu also uh, had told, Prithivitya Chayata Nagaradi Gram, Sarvata Prachar Hoi Gram, that my name will be spread in every town and village. So this prophecy was fulfilled by, by our Srila Prabhupada, who went all over the world to all the big cities and <coughs> spread the holy names, established temples, made so many devotees, and specifically as also here mentioned, uh, presenting the Bhagavad Gita as it is, which was then translated in, in so many languages already at Prabhupada's time, and still it is continued, and in, in all the major languages in the world, the Bhagavad Gita has been translated and distributed mm, practically then so distributed in every town and village in the whole world and so Srila Prabhupada himself is giving the credit to his spiritual master who made the initial attempt to spread Krishna consciousness. Of course Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada's father Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur he was also trying to spread Krishna consciousness mm. and not only in Bharadvasha in India but in the Western or English speaking world by uh, writing books in English language and, and dispatching in different places. Uh, also as we know even in 1896 the year when Prabhupada appeared so he had sent some books to, to America also and later on some small booklet and that was also found by the devotees in one university in New York. So and that is all by the, of course, desire of, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ultimately the Krishna consciousness has spread all over the world but then specifically through as empowered devotees and especially Srila Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. But out of humility, is giving credit to his spiritual master. And according to GBC also, they have 
um, given directives to all the temples that they should try to <coughs> have some wonderful programs in glorification of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada. Of course, every year on the appearance day of Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, we have uh, some glorification and a special offering and worship is there for Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada. But this year should be a special endeavor and uh, so therefore mm, <coughs> we should try to already start now thinking a little bit more about uh, this great personality and his contribution uh, and so many of Prabhupada's disciples have also translated or presented some of the uh, letters which Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada had written to his various disciples, not only Prabhupada, but of course Prabhupada's uh, letter or which mm, upon Srila Prabhupada one time writing to Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada just before Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada left this world one month before um, asking him so what seva can I do which will please you and then Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada he <coughs> he replied actually the same thing which he told him first time they met in Calcutta, the first time when Prabhupada met Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada. Mm. Although a little unwillingly, uh, that, uh, so he was interested in <coughs> trying to free uh, Srila Prabhupada, the famous movement was there, to try to free India from the influence of the British and the British rule. So he was uh, externally not so much inclined to take up spiritual life wholeheartedly, but some of his friends then told him he should go and meet this wonderful sadhu. And then he met him and then in the first meeting, so as Prabhupada was asking our Prabhupada, at that time of course, not initiated, asked him that what we could do and then Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada told him to spread the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Gauravani uh, in English language since he was educated and Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada recognized of course uh, immediately the greatness of Srila Prabhupada, a pure devotee can recognize the advanced souls, the great souls. And then Prabhupada was saying, our Prabhupada, that how we can preach if we are suppressed by, by the British, occupied by the British, first we should become free from the influence of the British. But Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada, he said, no, we cannot wait for that. We have to spread the message of Mahaprabhu. And then by doing that, then uh, we will be all benefited and actually then mm, also by Krishna consciousness then everything will be adjusted and of course then we have seen also and Prabhupada he took that to heart and then he tried to fulfill that but it took of course time but then the one month before Bhaktisiddhanta left so he again asked him what can I do for you and then he repeated, you preach the message of Mahaprabhu to the English speaking <coughs> uh, people, so the Englishmen or the Western countries and by Prabhupada's effort being empowered by his spiritual master, by Mahaprabhu, Krishna consciousness has spread all over the world. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Srila Prabhupada ki, Satchinandana Gaura Hari Ki. If personally I have any credit in this matter, it is only that I, I have tried to present Bhagavad Gita as it is without any other alteration. 
before my presentation of Bhagavad Gita as it is, almost all the English editions of Bhagavad Gita are introduced to fulfill someone's personal ambition. Actually, I remember even uh, myself, so I was interested in spiritual life in my youth, and mm, so in Europe, in Switzerland. And I had actually a few editions of Bhagavad Gita, and uh, so I certainly so I was attracted to that and learned something little, but actually not much by reading these different editions of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, because, as Prabhupada is mentioning also, they all had some uh, personal ambitions and therefore the Bhagavad Gita as it is, the message of Krishna, the pure message of Krishna was not presented. And therefore, uh, those who were reading, they were not able to, to understand actually the message and to take up uh, Krishna consciousness or spirit life. So myself also, so I was, had a, I think two or three copies of Bhagavad Gita by different philosophers, but I really couldn't really understand what's all about. And, and of course no idea how to worship Krishna, but then after receiving Bhagavad Gita as it is, I realized that this is actually the path I have to take. And then, so I was very fortunate um, to um, adopt Krishna consciousness and actually to come to India um, 44 years ago. And I was just 20 years old. I got the money for my 20th birthday for my parents. And with that money I came to, to bring Davan. And then I, fully embrace Krishna consciousness every day hearing Bhagavad Gita as it is from the devotees here and so so it is important to present Bhagavad Gita as it is which really Prabhupada did and so we have to of course then try to do the same present it as we have received from Srila Prabhupada and his disciples and give it to others so, but our attempt in presenting Bhagavad Gita as it is, is to present the mission of the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna. Our business is to present the will of Krishna, not that of any mundane speculator like the politician, philosopher or scientist, for they have very little knowledge of Krishna, despite all their other knowledge. When Krishna says, Man manavabhava mad bhakto mad yajimam namaskuru, etc. We, unlike the so-called scholars, do not say that Krishna and his inner spirit are different. Krishna is absolute and there is no difference between Krishna's name, Krishna's form, Krishna's qualities, Krishna's pastimes. This absolute position of Krishna is difficult to understand for any person who is not a devotee of Krishna and the system of parampara, disciplic succession. So one must be in disciplic succession. One has to receive the knowledge from a realized devotee who himself is in the disciplic succession, ultimately coming from Krishna. And then, uh, especially in this um, age, and coming uh, in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is also Krishna himself, and who has also are told, and of course, Mahaprabhu is no different from Radha and Krishna, and he has present. He has also told his devotees. I was as he was preaching. Um, after taking sannyas all over India and telling others to uh, actually adopt the principles of Bhagavad Gita, and then tell to others, Yari de Katahaka Krishna Padesh Amara Gyae Guru Hanatara Desh. Whoever you meet, you speak about Krishna's instructions of Bhagavad Gita. In this way, you become empowered also, and then you, you deliver the persons um, who are there in your vicinity. So that is the, the process. So we hear Bhagavad Gita, and then we imply, apply in our life, and then we, uh, after realizing the subject matter, we will not fully realize, but whatever we understood, then we should try to give to others. And then, uh, so we'll be benefited more also, and then others will benefit. 
So also Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada, uh, as he told uh, Srila Prabhupada that you should uh, preach the message of Mahaprabhu to others, and then he was telling him that it will be for your benefit and for the benefit of others. Of course, the pure devotees are uh, like Srila Prabhupada, uh, they are there um, already um, empowered by the Lord. And so, of course, we know eternal associates are there and they are never conditioned. Uh, but at the same time, in this world, uh, so um, they appear to be just like a uh, common man, but we should understand they are uh, extraordinary, like Srila Prabhupada, Bhaktisiddhanta, all these great personalities. And that is shown right uh, shortly after their appearance that they take up Krishna consciousness very quickly, wholeheartedly. And then, uh, so then, they're able to uh, very quickly uh, make the life perfect and then give Krishna consciousness to, to others. <coughs> so that the spiritual master must be in disciplic succession. And so he must be a representative of Krishna. The spiritual master is a representative of Krishna. Krishna Kripa Srimurti in the embodiment of the mercy of Krishna or the embodiment of the mercy of Mahaprabhu. Mm. To, so then he can uh, spread Krishna consciousness. Be empowered by Mahaprabhu Krishna. So generally the so-called scholars, politicians, philosophers and swamis with our perfect knowledge of Krishna try to banish or kill Krishna when writing commentary of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so, as some, as we know persons, they were saying that uh, we should not um, worship this Krishna, but the, 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 that which is within Krishna. So the impersonal Brahman, so Mayavadis, they give some interpretation of Bhagavad Gita in an impersonal way. In this way, so to say, try to kill Krishna. Of course, which is not possible. Krishna is eternal. He can never be killed. But just that is the um, language Srila Prabhupada is using just to show that the Mayavadis, so with their uh, misconceptions and their commentaries, uh, they are uh, actually causing harm for themselves and others by uh, denying the existence of Krishna and actually denying uh, the actual, uh, the presentation of the actual meaning of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. So but in the disciplic succession then we can understand mm, what Krishna wants to say. It becomes very clear if you hear from the bona fide representative. And so the, the Bhagavad Gita is very clear but we also need actually the spiritual master so we can understand it better, especially in the beginning. It may not be completely clear, but if you hear or we read the authorized um, presentation of Bhagavad Gita, the verses and then the commentaries, then we can very clearly understand uh, the absolute truth and the process of devotional service and then one can uh, advance rapidly. Such unauthorized commentary upon Bhagavad Gita is known as Mayavad Bhashya. And Lord Chaitanya has warned us about this unauthorized man. Lord Chaitanya clearly says that anyone who tries to understand Bhagavad Gita from the Mayavadi point of view will commit a great blunder. The result of such blunder will be that the misguided student of Bhagavad Gita will certainly be wielded on the path of spiritual guidance and will not be able to go back to home, back to Godhead. Mm. So we must be properly guided uh, by the able spiritual master in order to advance. Mm. Uh, so of course some, some persons are there, Mayavadis, who may be uh, <coughs> having this uh, understanding of impersonal aspect of the Absolute Truth and wanting to merge. And we understand that these people and these persons, they may also be addressed, addressed as transcendentalists, as mentioned in the Bhagavatam, uh, but they don't have the full understanding. 
So, but at least if they are not um, <laughs> saying anything against Krishna, mm. uh, so then they may be benefited and uh, to some extent, and they may, uh, as it is their desire, merge in the Brahma Jyoti, but that ultimately is of not much use. Because, uh, so the natural situation is to serve Krishna, and that is a conditioned state, spiritually conditioned state to merge in the Brahma Jyoti, and then one is not able to uh, serve Krishna. So, but the actual uh, position of the living entity is Jivara Sopoy Krishna Das. The understanding that I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. Krishna is clearly explaining in the 15th chapter, Mame Vamsa Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. That the living entities are my part and parcels. And then, as here, Prabhupada is mentioning, Man Manavabhava, Man Manavabhava, Mad Bhakto Madhyaji Mam Namaskaru. The Krishna is saying, You think, uh, you think about me. You become my devotee, you worship me, you offer uh, obeisances to me. And sarva dharma parijyajya. So you surrender unto me, you do what I want. So that uh, that is the proper way of, uh, of then assimilating the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita uh, by hearing from the authorized representative of the Lord and then implying applying in our life, practicing that, and then one can become perfect in due course of time. Our only purpose is to present this Bhagavad Gita as it is in order to guide the conditioned student to the same purpose for which Krishna descends to this planet. Once in the day of Brahma, or every uh, 8,600 million years, this purpose is stated in Bhagavad Gita and we have to accept it as it is. Otherwise there is no point of trying to understand the Bhagavad Gita and its speaker, Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna first spoke Bhagavad Gita, the Sun God, some hundreds of millions of years ago. We have to accept this fact and thus understand the historical significance of Bhagavad Gita without misinterpretation on the authority of Krishna. So actually Bhagavad Gita is eternal. So just like Krishna is eternal, his abode is eternal. So his words are also eternal, like the Bhagavad Gita. Whenever the material world is manifested, then Krishna will appear and then he will speak Bhagavad Gita. And just now also in one universe, Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. So Krishna's appearance in this world is eternal. And Krishna's Speaking Bhagavad Gita, that is also eternal in this in this world. Uh, so, but here is explained the Bhagavad Gita. So first, uh, in this one universe, so first time he spoke to Vivaswan, or to he spoke to the Sun God, and then later on, of course, that is once in a day of Lord Brahma. Uh, so actually, Krishna. Is appearing and every time he's speaking Bhagavad Gita, when he's appearing, uh, so once in a day of Lord Brahma is appearing. In this particular universe and in this earth planet is appearing and then he's speaking to the Bhagavad Gita uh, to Arjun for the benefit of the conditioned souls and those who are fortunate they will take it up and then they will, they can become perfect and enter the spiritual world. Mm. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, so therefore he is the Supreme Lord himself, but he he came as a devotee to um, actually give this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to become a man. And then of course, ultimately, more specifically, to of course, establishing the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the holy names, Krishna also says Satatam Kirtayantamam Yatanta Shadri Dvana Dvadaha. He's telling Arjuna he always chant my names. But then Mahaprabhu himself, uh, so because whatever the great man does, the common man will follow. So he himself was so he he came as a devotee uh, and of course to relish the mood of Bharadrani, but then to sp to 
establish the Yoga Dharma, the chanting of the holy names, and then also in which, which mood to, to chant the holy names ultimately. So, um, uh, in the mood of, uh, of course, for the Gauri Vaishnavas, followers of Mahaprabhu, adopting uh, the mood of the bridge buses in more advanced consciousness. Uh, but so first we have to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Lord and that we are not this body, we are spirit soul and that we have to try our best to advance in, in Krishna consciousness and then uh, in more advance, uh, advanced stage then we can by <coughs> hearing more about Krishna from the Shema Bhagavatam 10 canto and then especially by uh, reading and hearing about the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then we understand the essence of the Bhagavatam. So, and of course, the essence of what Krishna wants to say. And uh, so Mahaprabhu then gave the essence in regards to um, giving um, Braj Bhakti or Braj Bhav. So the mood of the eternal associates of Krishna so but of course we cannot immediately uh, come to the highest or embrace this highest uh, consciousness of the bridge buses but we should know what is the goal and we should try to slowly but surely advance in this regard mm. to interpret Bhagavad Gita without any reference to the will of Krishna is the greatest offense in order to save oneself from this offense, one has to understand the Lord as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as he was directly understood by Arjuna, Lord Krishna's first disciple. Such understanding of Bhagavad Gita really, uh, is really profitable and authorized for the welfare of human society in fulfilling the mission of life. The Krishna consciousness movement is certainly, uh, the Krishna consciousness movement is essential in human society. For it offers the highest perfection of life. How this is so is explained fully in the Bhagavad Gita. Unfortunately, mundane wranglers have taken advantage of Bhagavad Gita to push forward their demonic propensities and mislead people regarding right understanding of the simple principles of life. Everyone should know how God or Krishna is great and everyone should know the factual position of the living entities. Everyone should know that a living entity is eternally servant that unless, and that unless one serve Krishna and one has to serve illusion in different varieties of the three modes of material nature and thus wander perpetually within the cycle of birth and death. Even the so-called liberated Mayavadi speculator has to undergo this process. This knowledge constitutes a great science and each and every living being has to hear it for his own interest. People in general, especially in this age of Kali, are enamored by the external energy of Krishna and they wrongly think that by advancement of material comforts, every man will be happy. They have no knowledge that the material or external nature is very strong. For everyone is strongly bound by the stringent laws of material nature. A living entity is happily the part and parcel of the Lord and thus his natural function is to render immediate service to the Lord. Mm. So the happy situation, the natural position of the living entity that is to serve Krishna and then, and then one will be happy. So um, th there is a surup, and the natural constitutional position of the living entity is to serve uh, Krishna. Jaiva Dharma, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written a wonderful book, Jaiva Dharma. Uh, so the, the Dharma of the living entity, so the religion of the living entity, the constitutional position that is to serve Krishna. Dharma does not only mean religion, but it means the, uh, actually the, the nature of something. Like for example, we have water. So what is the natural or uh, intrinsic nature of water, it is liquid, and when we speak of water, especially when one we we want to drink water, it should be sweet water. 
So that is the dharma of water, the intrinsic nature of water is that it is liquid and that, um, yes, it is a sweet and we can drink it or we can use it to wash our hands or take a bath and wash our clothes, wash the vegetables. But sometimes it is changed, the nature is changed of, of water when it is cold. Not here, but uh, for example, in colder countries, like in Europe now, it is very cold, or in Russia. So then actually the, the, the nature of water is changed. Even sometimes you can say uh, that even um, big lakes are frozen. So I have seen that also even in, in Switzerland, where I grew up. So there's a big lake in the biggest city there, Zurich in Switzerland, there's a big lake. And maybe it is um, around th 35 kilometers long, the lake, huge lake, and, and it is uh, maybe 10 kilometer, or no, not maybe five kilometers, the width is there. So very big lake, and it's quite deep, and of course, in the summer, people are swimming there, and the boats are there, but sometimes in the winter, but it's very rare, when it is really cold, and I have seen that uh, maybe two times in my childhood. It was so cold, and then uh, and the uh, the water becomes ice, and people are skating. We are skating on the on the ice. So that is changed. The nature is changed. The water it has become ice. So even of course, sometimes people they uh, they put the water in the fridge refrigerator and they make ice cubes in the summer and then they put in the uh, whatever beverage they're having to drink so it is fresh mm, so that is changed the nature of water sometimes the water becomes salty due to environment and like even here in Brindavan when I first came 1980 many places were there and the water was very sweet to drink so different places but then due to changes in the environment, then less and less places we could find where the water is sweet. And now most of the places the water is not sweet, but it becomes a little salty. So then it is changed. So similarly, the living entity in contact with material energy, then um, the nature is changed of the natural propensity to serve Krishna and the conditioned soul is trying to, to enjoy in this material world, which is not actually completely possible to, to have some enjoyment there. Of course, some enjoyment is there, but that is material enjoyment, and it is very flickering, and it is not permanent, and it is not mm, real enjoyment. The example is given just like if you cut yourself, you have a wound, and then, or there's a blister there, maybe some water fell, or some other reason, and then there's some itch itching sensation, and you try to scratch it to get some relief. But that scratching is not really any relief, and it will, t will, t will not do much good. Uh, so similarly, trying to enjoy in this, in this world is not really possible. Mm. So it is, it is uh, temporary, and it is not the real enjoyment of, of the soul. Uh, so that uh, has to be understood. And so the Bhagavad Gita is spoken so that the conditioned soul can understand his actual nature, spiritual nature, a spirit soul, being different from this material body, gross and subtle, and that it is meant to serve Krishna. And then by serving Krishna in loving exchange, then the natural happiness will be experienced because by nature, just like Krishna, Krishna is unlimited, and he has an eternal form full of knowledge and bliss, similarly the living entities and as part and parcel of Krishna, they're also eternal and they're also full of knowledge and bliss, but in minor quanti quantity in comparison to Krishna. Krishna is Vibhu, great, and the living entity is Anu, so infinitesimal. But the same nature is there of uh, being eternal and full of bliss and knowledge in a personal form. So by realizing one's spiritual nature and, 
and, and being in the transcendental loving exchange with Krishna, then one can feel this transcendental happiness and it is ever increasing. And that is actually the perfection of life to realize that. Uh, our spiritual nature and Krishna's uh, transcendental form. Instead of satisfying his own personal material senses, he has to satisfy the senses of the Lord. That is the highest perfection of life. The Lord wants this and he demands it. So, so of course, like Krishna is telling Arjuna that um, ultimately I give up all kinds of religion and you surrender unto me. At the same time, even before Krishna was saying, he was explaining to, to, uh, to Arjuna that what he should do and uh, and then at the end he also says towards the end of Bhagavad Gita now you understood what I want you to do and but it is now your choice you can surrender you you can do whatever you want ultimately but actually you know so but Krishna actually wants that the living entity serving him but not by force but it should come um, with love and and so the living entity has to choose to serve Krishna and to love Krishna. It is natural, but in the conditioned state, uh, so then due to illusion, the living entity is not understanding this and then he's trying to be falsely happy in this material world, which is not really natural, but it's natural to serve. So at one point, so therefore Krishna is like just like a father sometimes he has to push the child you should do this you should do that and don't do this it is not good for you so krishna is also pushing arjuna a little bit and trying to push us yeah, yeah you should surrender but then also we have to understand that yes we should we should surrender to krishna and so some force is there but ultimately we have to decide also that we should uh, surrender to krishna which is natural ultimately so in the beginning, uh, so one has to force, one has to force one oneself, and the spiritual master Krishna has to demand to some extent, and then we should. But then we should realize that it actually we should serve Krishna. It is natural, and then once properly situated, then it is natural uh, to to serve Krishna. And uh, if one is free from the modes of material nature, and that time there is no force. Krishna doesn't have to demand and we don't have to force ourselves. It becomes natural in purified uh, existence. The living entity is naturally serving Krishna and there is a wonderful loving exchange. So we have to try to come to this position, to the transcendental spiritual position, free from the modes of material nature. But before that, so some, uh, some force has to be there and Krishna is demanding to some extent and and we have to force ourselves to to become free and to, to serve Krishna, to become free from modes of material nature. One has to understand the central point of Bhagavad Gita. Our Krishna consciousness movement is teaching the whole world the central point. So to surrender to Krishna. And because we are not polluting the theme of Bhagavad Gita as it is, anyone seriously interested in deriving benefits by studying the Bhagavad Gita must take help from the Krishna consciousness movement for practical understanding of Bhagavad Gita under the direct guidance of the Lord. We hope therefore that people will derive the greatest benefit by studying Bhagavad Gita as it is. Uh, as it is. As we have presented it here. And even uh, and if even one man becomes a pure devotee of the Lord, we shall consider our attempt a success. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. So, so pure devotee just wants to see that at least I should make one pure devotee. Of course, usually the empowered pure devotee is making many pure devotees. And, uh, but at the same time, so... We can see that practically speaking, speaking to become completely pure, it will take some time. But we should try our best to become uh, completely pure. And that will uh, satisfy Srila Prabhupada that uh, if he sees that his devotees 
his followers are becoming pure and uh, so but the pure devotee is, is uh, very humble and is very realistic and even a little success is there then he's satisfied and but again he will he will give the credit to his spiritual master and he will give credit to Mahaprabhu to Krishna for being successful, he will not take the credit. He is always in a humble position. Even actually Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thak Prabhupada, he was also, and we understand that Prabhupada, so then mm, took that same mood that even if one or two devotees are becoming pure, then our intent is successful. So we should try to become pure and then we should try to give this Krishna consciousness to others also. Hare Krishna. Any question? So wonderful preface by Srila Prabhupada. And then there's a very wonderful introduction, which is many pages, but uh, uh, very, uh, the essence, of course, of the Krishna consciousness movement, the philosophy, the essence is mentioned there in, in the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita. So the next few days, the different speakers will speak about the introduction. Hare Krishna. So we have a little Mahaprasad for everyone. Hare Krishna. You can come forward and take